I'm growing vegetables in my air cube hydroponics system and they're doing pretty well. I've had some harvests along the way, but most importantly, there's been a lot of lessons. Join me today as I share with you what I've learned about growing vegetables hydroponically. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and growing vegetables in this air cube system is a whole new chapter on my gardening journey. I've never done hydroponics before, so I wanted to try some different things to see what works and what doesn't work as I move forward with hydroponics. So I have tomatoes, I've got basil, I've got leaf lettuce, I've got arugula, and I've got some peppers growing in these cubes. The peppers, the basil, and the tomatoes were all transplants. The lettuce and the arugula all started from seed. I ran a full 24-hour cycle with the nutrient-rich water so that my mix of cocoa coir and perlite was evenly moist. And then I just sprinkled the lettuce seeds all over the top, just using broadcast seeding trying to fill in as much space. Lettuce seeds are sown very shallow, and so I just took a chopstick to loosen up the surface and lightly cover the seeds. I did the same thing in the other cube with the arugula, spreading the seed and then lightly covering it using the chopstick. Normally the water comes from below in this ebb and flow system, but this is the one time that I watered the soil. This was just to get the soil mix to settle in around the seeds. For the tomato plants, I went ahead and pulled out the grow bag from the cube. I didn't want to run the risk of any of the soil getting down inside the cube. I just dug a shallow hole where the plant is going to nestle, took out the plant tag, go ahead and removed the plant from the pot, and then I removed some of the lower leaves that were going to end up being lightly buried if I left them in place. And then I just went ahead and filled in the mix around the plant putting it in a little deeper than in the pot. And then I placed some bamboo sticks to help hold up the plants. I took some twine and tied the plant to the stick to help hold it erect. When the second plant was tied to the stake, it was ready to put it back into the cube. I went ahead and just lifted it up, placed it in, settled the soil a little bit, and it's ready to go. The lettuce seed germinated in just a couple days and began growing incredibly well. The tomato plants also started off well and gave me good growth from the very beginning. I wanted to try to figure out what the best cycle would be by observing the way that the cubes filled and then emptied before I put the rest of the plants in. And after a couple weeks, I then added the basil and the pepper plants and then reviewed again to see how well they were being filled and emptied. When the nutrient rich water fills the containers, you can actually see that the soil becomes quite moist. In fact, you can actually see the water sitting on the surface. It's good to watch this to get an idea if it's too much water or not enough water. When the water pump removes all the water that's in the cube, you can actually see the water level start to drop below the surface. I ended up with four 
30 minute cycles over the course of a 24 hour period and the plants did extremely well. The lettuce I began harvesting at about the three week point. Because I have so many plants when I decide to make a salad I just reach in and I'll pull out the entire group of leaves and I do the same for this leaf lettuce and for the arugula behind it. Being careful to just shake off the perlite and the cocoa core and then continue harvesting as I need the lettuce. I can also just take off some individual leaves if I want to remove the plant. It all depends on how big a salad I want to make. In an earlier video I discussed developing a recipe for the nutrients that the plants need. Figuring out how to mix the fertilizers so that these plants have all the nutrients to grow. The problem is, and I was well aware of this ahead of time, is that different plants have different nutrient needs. And I knew that the recipe that I was using was high in nitrogen. I wanted to see what would happen to the plants in a hydroponic system using a high nitrogen fertilizer. Leafy greens do well with a lot of nitrogen, so it's no surprise that my lettuce and arugula are looking great, as is the basil. You may have noticed that the colors changed. I turned off my red and blue light and I'm going with just a white light so you can get a really good feel for how healthy these plants are and what they're looking like. Now, these leafy greens are doing great with a high nitrogen fertilizer, but plants like tomatoes don't necessarily like that much nitrogen. Nitrogen promotes leaf growth and stem growth, and that's exactly what happened with my tomatoes. The tomato plants have grown great. They're tall and long, and that's what you can expect with all that nitrogen. But the flower set was a little bit late, and there should be more flowers and flowers closer together. So I'm pretty sure the excessive nitrogen is affecting these plants that should already be fruiting. By comparison, in my grow tent, I have the same type of tomato plant that I put in the grow bag on the same day, and I'm already harvesting fruit from these plants that didn't receive a high nitrogen fertilizer. Another factor that could explain why the tomato plants are so tall and leggy is the light. I'm using these red and blue lights which are not as intense as a lot of the grow lights I typically use when growing indoors. And so this less intense light may not be enough for the tomato plant to stay compact and flower and grow fruit. But it's enough for the basil and the lettuce. The pepper plants are looking good, and so I want to make some corrections before they reach the point of flowering and fruiting, and I don't want to run into the same problem as I did with the tomatoes. One of the things I love about gardening is trying new things, and then learning from what goes wrong. One of the reasons I know so much about gardening is because I've made a lot of mistakes over the years. But most importantly, I've learned from those mistakes. So I'm at a crossroad and there are some important things that I need to change moving forward with growing vegetables in a hydroponic system. First, as I suspected, it really doesn't work well to mix plants, to put plants in that have different nutrient needs. So this lettuce is about done. I'm going to go ahead and finish harvesting the lettuce and I'm not going to grow any more lettuce hydroponically. I want to focus on the basil and the peppers and the tomatoes. With that focus, I can then modify the fertilizer I'm using, not use so much nitrogen and instead focus a little bit more on the phosphorus and potassium when I put together my recipe. As for these tomatoes, 
Well, I'm going to swap out these weak lights and put in stronger lights to help out these tomatoes as they flower and fruit. And I'm going to top the tomatoes so they don't grow any taller and will put their energy into that fruit production. And as soon as I get a harvest so that I can say I got a harvest for my first batch of tomatoes that I grew hydroponically, I'm going to pull these plants out in just a couple weeks and I'll put more tomato plants in. So with more tomato plants and I expect I'll also put in some more pepper plants, I'll change the focus of my vegetable gardening moving forward. I'm going to try to get plants, particularly the tomatoes that are smaller, bushier and will give me more fruit production. And if I can find that right blend, it should also benefit the peppers as well. You can expect that I'll show that in a future video, assuming that I can figure it out and make it work. But that's part of the fun of gardening, is figuring it out and making it work. And with a air cube hydroponic system like this, I've got a lot of flexibility to figure out what I need to know to have a successful indoor vegetable garden. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.